Um, all right, I'm here with Marlena Sparza. Uh, you're making your pro debut. I am. <laughs> it's been it's been years since we we've seen each other. So yeah, let's it's catch like, up a little bit. Yeah, it's been like a good at least three years. At yeah. least, yeah. Yeah. Well, let's uh, let's back up a little bit. You you didn't go to the the second Olympics. I didn't. I didn't get. I didn't get to Rio. Yeah, I mean, I don't like to just run off the bat, bring up bad memories. It's okay. But, but, uh, I, I'm all right. Yeah. 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 Um, well, I mean, what do I say? Um, I was winning everything as as usual. And then at trials, I just got two really bad decisions against somebody that I beat seven times. Um, it was very strange. And then the girl that uh, won didn't qualify for the game. So there was no contestant at my weight class in Rio. Uh, USA Boxing just was over me. <laughs> Do you think in some ways you dodged a bullet, though, considering all the anti-doping stuff that went on and what kind of a mess it seemed like the Olympics were in terms of publicity? Maybe I was focusing on that stuff. Yeah. I wouldn't I say it was the best Olympics so far, but um, I wouldn't necessarily call it ever call it dodging, but it bullet because it really was like hard to handle. But um, as far as I'm concerned, I've, I'm kind of grateful for the most part, just because I wouldn't have ever decided to do this if I didn't get to the games. I think uh, the games was something I was looking for to kind of finish it off. And since I didn't get it, I really, like I was I'm super still super hungry to like box. I still want to box. And given the way me and BOSA boxing are set up, <laughs> our relationship isn't the best. So my only choice was to was to go pro. And now that I'm actually here doing it, I've like like boxing again. Like I'm finally in love with boxing again and it's it's, it feels really good to, to be in the situation. Because politics can really take, and the business end can really sap the passion end of things. Right? Yeah, it was harsh. I mean, um, I never thought that the two together would really kill off my spirit for that, for act, for boxing, because it's just what I love to do. But given, you know, the circumstances and what happened, uh, it really did take a toll on my spirit for the sport. And now that I'm away from anything bad and I'm kind of still doing what I do and then entering a new game, which I like things that are very difficult and this is really difficult. So uh, because of that, I'm I'm enjoying myself and I'm happy about it. What's been the biggest part? This is a major transition from that pro game, which is one kind of game, to, or, you know, the amateur game, which is one game, to the pro game. Yeah, what do you... I think the transition is the hardest part. I'm, I'm more worried about the actual transition from, from the amateurs to the pros than I am about the actual fighting right now. Hmm. Um, I know that I need to change my style a little bit more and just settle down just a little bit, which I have a really good idea of how to get that done, you know, in increments. But I think that that's what I'm so... It gets me so nervous is the actual thought of that it's just a change. And the structure is different. How you proceed is different. I thought there was gonna be it was gonna be really structured, and it's not as structured as, as I thought it was gonna be. Um, the idea of the pro game, I thought it was gonna have, you know, it was gonna be very A B C D like down the line, and it's yeah. not like that at all. It's just no. kind of like you get thrown into the fire, and I kind of ex I didn't expect that at all, and uh, so now I'm really excited to kind of find my way and find the structure within within the program and what are my regimens, who's my team going to be, what am I about. Um, I get to finally um, be myself in front of people because I usually was just labeled, have my endorsements and I have the, the things that people saw in that nature, but I would never actually get to, to be myself really or talk about any of my opponents or anything like that so hmm. it's it's a it, it's fun for me in that way that people actually get to know me now versus just labeling me as what they want to so i'm, I'm excited about that and as much of a mess as amateur boxing is uh particularly in this country it's still more structured right there's still more people to be beholden to is that what you mean there's more it, of an organization around you yeah i would say uh when it comes to the amateurs and also because i was in there for so long but it's it's a lot more structured structured than uh, the pro game just because there's there's rules there's this is what you have to win and after you win that this is what you have to win next and right. this is you know you know the idea of what countries are the best ones you you know the tournaments that matter and the tournaments that people just go to for experience but I wouldn't it's not that way here it's um, every fight does matter and you know losing is a huge deal um, whether you you can't just like look you can't look bad in front of someone you you win anyway if you were gonna dominate you have to dominate it's not like oh well, you won the fight but you look bad you know it doesn't matter like they still judge you on you know round per round 
yeah. Would, yeah I think this this uh I'm starting to feel that that the pro game is more on a round per round thing like it's not you're not as good as your last fight you're as good as your last round you know like you end a fight on a bad note doesn't really say much about your win so I would say um it, it's it's a little bit more judgmental than I'm used to and it's it's not as structured so it's kind of like you have to find what you're about what you want and then you it's whatever you want it to be it's 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 different for sure you're a truly independent contractor in that year you know if you don't tend to your career uh it'll go away and there'll be somebody else and that's how the sport it's kind yeah. of like the acting industry in a sense you're always just kind of on your own and whatever you get it's it's based on your work exactly it's kind I, of scary I, it is scary it's a yeah you're your own entity and if you don't if you don't pay attention to your business and how you're running it then it's gonna fall real quick like you have to make sure you pay your mortgage every month it's not you're not just gonna sit there uh, doing nothing so it's um it's it's different but I like the idea of it it keeps my mind active and I'm not bored um I haven't been excited about a fight in I can't even remember how I can't even remember the last time I was excited about a fight like I was so used to okay I'm just gonna this is what I do I just get in the ring and I keep training and I get in the ring but yeah. now I have to pay attention to the small stuff like I don't want to get hit with anything I don't need to get hit with like those types of things that actually you know kind of keep me really wired are yeah. are he here again so it's been it's been good but it's been different what do you know about your opponent I don't know much about her I know um that she has an MMA background Huh. And she would lose a lot then, and then she went pro, and she has two fights, and she has two losses, but she's left-handed. And do you have a lot of experience with southpaws? I mean, from boxing for so long, I, I do have ex a lot of experience with southpaws. They're not my favorite at all. No one's favorite. Uh, I hate them, but um, <laughs> I know she doesn't have a lot of experience, so I don't know what's gonna bother me more: her being left-handed or her being kind of green because they throw their punches a little bit different. If you, yeah. yeah, if you if you have a really good fighter, I know exactly probably what you're gonna do. But it's the one, it's the people that are kind of green that throw you off because you know you're like, what, like, why'd you throw that? Like, yeah. I don't, I, you know, you're supposed to be throwing this punch. So I don't know what's gonna bother me more. And right now, I'm just thinking that I just need to make sure that I keep. If she's wild, just try to keep her calm and kind of see what works. And then if she's already calm herself and not as crazy as I think, well, then I can at that point probably be more aggressive. But I don't know much about her. <laughs> what brought you to Golden Boy? I know you were kind of uh, uh, making a choice between which, which promotional companies you wanted to go with. You're very marketable. People know who you are. Yeah. So it was a big deal to turn pro. Why Golden Boy? Uh, I actually chose Golden Boy because they seemed like that they cared more about my actual career than, than I realized that they did. Um, hmm. Every all promoters and basically if any if you go into any business as soon before you actually get pinpointed somewhere everyone's gonna you know do the most to try to get you sure but um giving into that process anytime i wanted something changed anytime i had a you know i didn't really like the sound of something or I, or i wanted something brand new that no one's really ever talked about they were the they were less hesitant than anybody to to really help me so i didn't have any problems uh with my contract getting anything changed um i didn't have to call an attorney till like the very end just to check everything oh, wow. but there was no arguments it was just if i wanted something um with everybody was kind of the same but they were just you could i could just tell it wasn't they did it because they felt like they had to do it it wasn't like they wanted to do it and they weren't on the same page with me mentally as what i feel like i can do for the sport of right. women's boxing i feel like i have a lot to bring to it i feel like uh, i could sell a lot of tickets i feel like it could be a huge thing and um, I feel like Golden Boy was more on my page than anybody else. At their core, they're the only one that has a fighter that's running the business. Or that's the core of their business. Yeah. <laughs> Mix up, does that make a difference too? It did make a difference, I think. I think especially because uh, how Oscar got Golden Boy promotions and how he sold himself as well. I mean, he was huge and he was really attractive. He knew how to sell himself to, to both the the male and female um, viewers. And I feel that it did have a big deal on, on that aspect where they could kind of see the commercial end and also noticed that I could fight. I think um, a lot of people were just thinking, oh, she's really commercial, really commercial, but not really paying attention to the fact that they're still gonna sell me as a fighter. And I think Golden Boy did the best job at kind of still focusing on the fighting part, but uh, not forgetting that there's a lot that I can do. 
Have you been to this venue before? I haven't. India? Oh, no, I practically no. grew up there. It's a, my whole family is from down there, but it's a great little fight town. Is it? And that venue is going to have a lot of Mexican fight fans. That's going to be really exciting, I yeah. imagine, to be to be in front of that kind of demographic and and to be pit in that kind of environment right off the bat. Yeah, I haven't I haven't been there, but I've heard I've heard a lot about it. And every time I mention it, everyone's like, "Oh yeah," and I've heard of it before, but I've never been there. Um, I'm excited about it. I'm nervous, which is a good thing. And I, I think they've told me that the the background and everything that's there and the, the majority of people that come up to those fights are, are Hispanic. And I'm excited about that, too, because I need really I need people to actually recognize me as a fighter at this point. Right. Are you are you what, what is your ethnicity? Mexican. You're Mexican. I'm yeah. Mexican. Okay. Yeah. My my dad's from Sinaloa and my mom's from Juarez. Oh, all right on. Oh, yeah. Okay, so you're the fir- your first generation mm-hmm. then. Yeah. That's the and you're, and you're bilingual as well. Yeah. Well, I mean, I when cameras are on, I don't talk so well, but I can understand everything and then I speak. But um, I have to, I'm practicing now still. Yeah, I'm still. Yeah, uh, my communication is not on point all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've actually, I understand it as I grew up around it, but they wanted us to be quote unquote American. So yeah, that's exactly what happened to me. So I didn't my. Dad didn't know English till I was like 11. Oh, wow. So I grew up in the house with like English and Spanish because my mom is fluent in both. And then when I would go to school, it was all English. They wanted to put us in English classes. And then I would come back speaking Spanish. And then along the way, it kind of like trickled down. Hmm. So my sister's completely fluent. My little brother, my older brother's a little bit better than me. And then my little brother's a little bit worse than me. So kind of just. Yeah, that's kind <laughs> of our stole. spectrum as well. <laughs> yeah. That's really funny. Um, who did you, uh, are you both, Nicola and, and, and you are in the same weight class? No, she's, so she, I'm weighing in at 110. Oh. Um, she's weighing in at like, I think 115. Okay. Um, cause she walks around like 125, 127. I walk around like 119. Okay. Did yeah. you guys work together for, for we, this fight? Yeah, we do. But we, what we do is more technical. Like when we work together, it's all tech. Um, but when we spar, we have to spar with guys cause we both prefer it. It's, and like, it, it's just preferable. Like there's just no point. Yeah. Well, is it because there's kind of a wide disparity in, in, in talent level or skill level with, uh, among female fighters or is it just a little bit tougher with the guys? It's, it's a lot harder with the guys. So I think we might give each other a good, good session, but it's not, I'd rather like have a guy cause it's, it's just a lot more difficult. And I can take it a lot more serious <laughs> than than I can. So it's like, oh, I hit, like I just feels weird when I hit her. Like, oh, sorry, because <laughs> like, we're so cool now. But yeah. and we never fought in the amateurs, which is strange as well. But I, when we practice, we'll do tech and stuff to, for speed drills. But we won't if we go like full on sparring. Then we'll just spar with guys. Where did you do the majority of your prep? Was it here? Uh, here in at Virgil's gym. So oh, okay. S and C and cardio and all, like or. We do Remy as well, but here we do the SNC and all the hypoxy training and all that. Yeah. And then a lot of the more of the boxing and stuff was done at Virgil's gym. I was laughing at looking at some of the old footage because you were like one of the test pilots for the original hypoxic stuff at the Undisputed, and they had like Victor back there holding <laughs> a, a tube and, yeah. and you were on the mitts. How about this gym? Yeah, what, what, this gym's amazing. Uh, it's funny because I knew the hypoxy machine better than Baz did. Like, I would have to tell him and teach him how to do it. <laughs> and then now I come back and there's like this whole, and now Baz is telling me things I have no idea what he's talking about. So it's pretty <laughs> cool, but this gym is like, it really helps. And it's a lot easier than having, like, if I don't feel like cooking up everything and sprinting on that, then I can just go into the dome and work out in the dome. And it's the same difference. And yeah. then um, now with the with the oxygen one, that that one works a lot. Have you tried that? The 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 active recovery yeah. tent, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can feel the difference. Right? Yeah, and I had a head like if I, if I have a headache or something, if I go in there, then I'll feel fine. It's really strange. Yeah. <laughs> Do you feel the difference in the sparring? Too, yeah. With all this stuff, it, it helps a lot. Um, I recover a lot faster now. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't even. I don't get tired. Not now, at least. I probably That's don't crazy. think I'm gonna get tired for a while. But I can tell the difference a lot, and my recovery time is like twenty seconds or something. I don't even need a whole minute. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's, it, it works. <laughs> Last thing, um, it's a different world for like I remember you know Ann Wolf was was big and and Christy Martin, yeah, but it was kind C. of like Riker. a star here. Yeah, Lucia yeah. Riker, but it was not. Uh, full blown it didn't seem it was kind of like if you were looking for it you'd find it Ronda Rousey kind of changed the game I think with MMA made it more popular uh, Holly Holm uh, yeah. as well who's really great to watch 
do you think right now is is the right time to uh, to turn pro as a female? I, yeah, definitely. I don't think if it was if it was a different situation. And Clarissa Shields. Too. Yeah, uh, I don't think if it was a different situation, I would have been uh, so aggressive with the idea of, of going pro because I really did try to like I was aggressive with it. I I did take my time and I was patient, but I really was like, okay, this needs to be done like this year. Uh, because then I need to still get into the fight mode, still get everything done. I still want to have like a few fights before the year ends. Sure. And it was because of that, because I do think it's a good time. I think um, men are more open to the ideas in, in, in the sport, given the fact that Ronda did make so much money mm -hmm. um, and people did respect her and people did want to watch her. I think um, because of that, like a lot of the girls are getting more attention. Once people, I mean, you have people that's been fighting and they're barely, they're acting like they're brand new, like Heather Hardy and um, that's like they've been around. Like, yeah. Where have you guys been? So I think that now that um, they're looking, they're looking for the people to kind of bring up the women's, uh, the women's side of boxing. I feel that yeah, this is definitely a good time to kind of get your name and your face in there. Um, because someone's going to take off hard. Someone's going to take off. And it's just who the people take to. So could be Clarissa, could be Heather Hardy, could be anybody, but whoever people take to is who they take to. And I, f I for sure will know by the end of the year, I think. All right. Yeah. Well, thanks so much. <laughs> thanks.